How's it going, my friends? Uh, it's good to see you folks back. I've, uh, like always, you know, I'm getting a lot of comments and uh, it's taken me uh, longer to respond to comments and everything. And I love it. So keep them coming. Uh, we have, uh, I gave it last time my phone number and I got a couple calls, 619-672-1741. You can call me, text me, uh, email joe at samolaw.com. I love hearing from everyone. Uh, you can post comments in, uh, in the YouTube. Uh, the Spotify folks, they can't, there's no real comments kind of section there. That's, yeah, it's unfortunate. So if you want to leave comments and stuff, you, you can go to YouTube. I, I wish there was some sort of mechanism like that. Maybe, maybe in the future, who knows? So, uh, so that's pretty cool. There is a lot of rain in San Diego the last week, huh? My, um, so <laughs> when it rains in San Diego, it's like a revolution, right? They, uh, so my daughter goes to it's like an acting class on Monday night. And every time there's rain, there's like 5,000 emails and text messages. Is class going to go forward in the rain? You know, to the point where the instructor has to send an email to everyone saying, we are having class tonight. You know, I mean, it's an indoor class. <laughs> the rain is outdoor. You know, it's, uh, but you know, okay, here's a little trick for you. You know, being a little lawyer trick. Uh, I never say rain. I use the words incremental weather, you know? <laughs> Anything I could do to sound smart. Like dumb, I'm smart and I want respect. You know? <laughs> so I'll email a client like, despite the incremental weather, the court proceeding will continue, you know, say like stuff like that. That's what us lawyers like to do. We don't want to use like simpler terms. We want to sound smart, you know? We're not doctors after all. We were freaking trying to sound smart here, you know? <laughs> all right. Operation Lone Star is what we are going to discuss today. It is practically a civil war in the state of Texas, which has seen its history of wars. We have about, in the year 2023, depending on the source, at least about two and a half million people across the border, maybe three and a half million. That comes up to about 8,000 to 10,000 people per day crossing, which is a lot. And it's, uh, it's becoming an issue in the sense that you have the federal government and the state of Texas at odds and fighting each other over this. And that's what I always say is the most dangerous type of fighting is when you have one governmental entity fighting another governmental entity. Uh, it's always different than if it's a governmental entity fighting people, you know, or people like suing other people. Uh, this one is, we got the federal government versus the state of Texas, and it is getting extremely tense, uh, down there in the Rio Grande River. We were having a discussion off camera. It's Rio Grande River, correct? <laughs> Mateo is from Texas. He's from Brownsville, Texas. How do you pronounce it in Texas? Rio Grande. It's Rio Grande? Texas. Well, not uh, Texas. Right, right. That's, that's typical Texas. So they just misspelled? Grand with an E at the end? <laughs> Rio. Mexico, you want to sound like a Texan. So you want to say Rio Grande? Be like, I'm here for Rio Grande River, right? <laughs> I love it. Okay, okay. That's some good advice here. That way you could fool the immigration authorities, maybe, right? <laughs> All right. So if we have up to 10,000 people crossing a day. Now, like I always say, I'm going to explain a lot of this from the legal standpoint, you know, and, and I know everyone comes out in different, you know, let the immigrants in, don't let them in and, or, you know, build a wall, build two wall, you know, whatever. Right. So I'm kind of going to go over, you know, how the Supreme court has been involved, the different courts, the, the legal system and how it is now playing out in Congress with, you know, them pa trying to pass a bill to kind of ease the tension there. Okay. So here we go. Now, Texas has spent with governor Abbott, has spent something like $5 billion. Again, the estimates kind of vary uh, in, in uh, sending people out to different states, you know, like Denver, New York, Chicago. Uh, and he, he, I, we did a podcast on that. And I said I, that I did not think that that was unconstitutional. And he has not been uh, uh, prosecuted for doing something unconstitutional by shipping out migrants to these different states. Uh, I will say they stopped using the term sanctuary cities. Did you notice that? Like New York kept saying it was sanctuary city. Uh, and they stopped saying it after thousands of migrants got shipped there. But it did, it created a crisis there too. Uh, and then also my, my favorite one time I discuss is 
Martha's Vineyard, right? So one time, uh, Texas sent a bunch of migrants to Martha's Vineyard. And for the life of me, I've been trying to figure it out. They somehow got everyone out of there in less than 24 hours and onto a prison barracks. Uh, I'm sorry, a military barrack that looked like a prison, <laughs> you know? So I have been trying to figure out how they did that. If I ever figure that out, it was very clandestine. If I ever figure it out, I'll do an episode on that because I just thought that was uh, super funny. So uh, also, Texas has spent something like maybe a billion and a half dollars for about 12 miles of border wall. Pretty expensive border wall there, right? I mean, freaking Zeke wants to play racquetball there. <laughs> no, well, actually, a lot of it is in the Rio Grande River. Uh, is that redundant to say Rio Grande River? A little bit. Oh, my, okay, here, I am so good at useless information. My, one of my pet, I don't want to call it a pet peeve, but something I always uh, tell people, wait, that's uh, redundant, is when someone sends out some sort of invitation and they say, please RSVP. That's redundant. Trivia. Why? Because play is pleasing. Yeah. yeah. RSVP stands for Respondez si vous play, which is please respond. So if you say please RSVP, I always send back an, an email saying, you know, by the way, that's a little redundant. Um, I never get a thank you. <laughs> People just like look at me weird. Just like, just like you're looking at me right now. All right, all right, all right. Can we now focus, Zeke, please? Can we get back to the task? Okay, all right. Thanks, thanks. Okay, so uh, anyway, so that's a lot of wall uh, costs, okay? Um, several millions of dollars on uh, uh, the razor wire that the state of Texas put uh, on the, you know, near the river. Uh, so, so some of these things uh, became very problematic in the sense that you had the state of Texas building a wall, uh, and then the federal government would come in, and they started... Uh, tearing down, you know, some of the wiring. They started uh, suing Texas, saying you have to like remove your barriers. Uh, you had a situation on January 12 of this year where three migrants drowned and uh, and died in the river. And a, you know, there was a um, a theory that a lot of the reason why is because they couldn't cross the river because there's all these barriers and razor wire and this and that. Um, and then so you know, it, it became in increasingly tense because then the Texas Border Patrol which is the Texas government, uh, they were blocking federal uh, troops or, or what do you want, federal, you know, government officials from getting in the border patrol. Uh, and so, you know, as I said, this is becoming a big deal. That went to the Supreme Court because uh, eventually the, uh, the federal government started cutting the wires. The state of Texas tried to stop them. And then a federal district court said, no, the federal government can indeed cut the wires. Uh, it got appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court did not stop the federal government from cutting the wires. Uh, there's still uh, a lawsuit pending. Uh, Supreme Court will decide if the barriers that the state of Texas built uh, on the Rio Grande River has to be removed. Um, I said, and I did a podcast just on that case, and I said that my gut feeling was that the Supreme Court will say you have to remove that border because this is a federal issue, this immigration, and not a state issue. Now, I'm going to briefly this time, okay, go over this kind of how this, uh, the history of this, because the, I always say one of the reasons why I love being a lawyer is that every single law can be traced back uh, in history for hundreds of years. You know, even if a law that's today that they pass, it, it goes back hundreds of years in terms of why does this governmental entity have jurisdiction to do this? How did, uh, you know, is this a law that the people passed or that the government passed? Uh, is it kind of, did it have to be passed by a two thirds majority, half majority? And all of these things go into every law and all of them go back hundreds of years, all right? So this, this one here is extremely important in the sense that who has the control of the Rio Grande River? Now you got me all like the Rio Grande. I'm just going to call it Rio Grande. This, this Texan here, all right, um, the Big River. Can we just call it Big River? Uh, okay, <laughs> the Big River. So who has jurisdiction to, uh, you know, uh, maintain and uh, defend, if you want to call it, or attack, or whatever the heck you want to call it? Who, you know, who, who could run the Rio Grande River and, and the border wall and everything? So this is going to go back in the sense of history. So... Uh, the 1500s, the Spaniards discovered 
Texas. Don't you love that word discovered? <laughs> I remember, now, this is when I was a kid, right? You know, oh, Christopher Columbus, you know, discovered America, right? And he discovered all these people that have been living here for thousands of years. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I always thought, uh, I, you know, it's, it's a funny term. So anyway, so the Spaniards came and they kind of colonized uh, that area that we now know as Texas for centuries. Um, and then it wasn't until about 1820, this is where it picks up here, uh, Mexico gained its independence from Spain. It was like a series of different battles and different wars. Uh, so by the 1820s, uh, Mexico gained its independence and then Texas became part of Mexico. That's why we celebrate on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Da, Mateo's giving me the finger here. That is not why the May... Yeah, Cinco de Mayo, what is it? There was like a little tiny village that was uh, occupied by the French and they kicked out the French and that's how it all came up. And in Mexico, they don't even celebrate it. It's just something here we do for tacos. <laughs> all right, so anyway, so in the 1820s, uh, again, Joe Samuel, useless information. That part I, I love, uh, dispensing useless information. Okay, so uh, in 1820 then, so Mexico became, um, you know, or Texas became a part of Mexico. Uh, and then the the best twist of irony imaginable is that when Texas was part of Mexico, a bunch of illegal aliens from the United States were going into Texas, <laughs> right? From the United States, like from the East Coast and from Florida and, and, and all this. All yet all these, these uh, white settlers from America going into Texas illegally. Uh, and then it got so rampant that uh, eventually the president of the United States was President Polk in the 1840s. He ran on the platform, we're going to annex Texas and Texas will become part of the United States. So sure enough, then there was, um... <laughs> okay, hold on. So it became so rampant, all these people going into Texas that then Tex American Texans uh, had a revolution in the 1830s and took over Texas from Mexico. And there was a small period of time where Texas was its own country. You knew that obviously, right, Mateo? The good old days when Texas was its own country. Can't you remember anything? I remember the Alamo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Republic of Texas. It was a very short amount of time. Uh, unless you lived in there, <laughs> there's probably forever. <laughs> so, it was, and so it became its own country. And then, uh, and then the United States said, well, all our people are going to Texas uh, illegally because it was uh, a part of Mexico. Now it's a part of Texas. And all these illegal aliens keep going in there now uh, from the United States. So we're going to annex Texas. Uh, so, so President Polk ran on that platform. And then uh, sure enough, they, there was a war uh, where the United States, you know, wanted to take over Texas. Texas wanted to stay Texas Republic, right? And Mexico wanted to take Texas back. So it was this Amer Mexican-American war, but there was all these different factions and they were all fighting over Texas. I, I can't believe I'm saying that right now. They're all fighting over Texas. And the United States ends up winning. It was hard fought, uh, but the win wasn't unconditional. There had to be to stop the war because Mexico was going to keep fighting and it was going to, it was just a bloody war. It got unpopular to stop it. They signed a treaty, the treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in, in uh, 1848. This is a, this treaty is very important because it relates to this case directly. Uh, the treaty went like this. So they would have the border of Texas uh, into Mexico at the Rio Grande river. All right, so that's the border. So anything south of that is Mexico, anything north of that is America. Uh, and then they, the, in the treaty, the, the river would be long. So who owns the river? Can you buy the river? You know, <laughs> it belongs to the United States and Mexico, which is pretty strange, right? You got two entities, two different you know, countries owning the Rio Grande River. Uh, and then the border, they kind of have this theory or, or in the treaty, uh, and then over the years, so the border is kind of the middle of the river, you know, but as you know, water goes on both sides, right? And the middle of the river changes every day because of the, the tide or, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes there's more water, less water. Uh, so even the middle of the, so it's, it's very confusing where that middle is. Uh, and then I'll tell you who did not win that war was the, the Texas, the Republic of Texas, Right. So they lost, and it was very clear in that treaty between the United States and uh, Mexico that 
The Rio Grande River is controlled by the United States and Mexico. So those are the only two entities that can make rules about the Rio Grande River, not the state of Texas, okay? Remember that because that is, that's going to go into play here in terms of all the, the, the various legal issues. Um, and then the other part of the treaty was that the United States would then annex the state of Texas. Uh, they had to pay Mexico $15 million for the whole state of Texas. And I think that we got freaking ripped off. <laughs> I got proof, Zeke, that we got ripped off in that deal. Get this. So that treaty had to be ratified by the Senate, which in 1848, there was only 26 states. So there's 52 senators. 38 said, okay, fine, we'll pony up 15 million for the state of Texas. 14 senators said, no, we're getting ripped off. <laughs> Those were, a majority of them were, uh, well, we had a two-party two government back then. It was not Republicans and Democrats. It was Democrats and Whigs. <laughs> so the Whig party, uh, maybe that's how they went out of business. You know, they probably pissed off everyone in Texas and the whole South. You know, uh, so they said, no, all oh, 15 million dollars. We don't want Texas, damn it. Okay, anyway, uh, so so that's how it all became about. And that is uh, where we now stand in the sense that the federal rule and uh, the the wars that were fought, as what you know, all the went down and, and said, you know, so in this, the jurisdiction of this area is the United States and, and Mexico. That's who can control this. The state of Texas has no say. Uh, in this. Now, if the state of Texas had won that war or, or was a major factor, maybe, you know, they would have had, a, you know, somebody on the table and maybe they would have said something like, yeah, we, this happens in other countries, you know, like Hong Kong is, is a part of China, but they have different rules in terms, you know, uh, different than other like that Shanghai has or that uh, Beijing has because, you know, different wars were fought and different entities won or lost or whatever. So Texas law, had they won or had they been a big factor, maybe it would have been in there that Texas gets control of the Rio Grande River. Do you see what I'm saying? So anyhow, so so that is what happened there. And now, apparently, right, the Governor Abbott of Texas does not dig that history, <laughs> right? I'm sure if he was here, he'd be like, no, Mr. Samo, you got this all wrong. We won the war, <laughs> right? Because he's, uh, or even if he says, okay, we lost the war, but we can't get screwed this bad still. Um, because he is taking steps, like I said before, to build his own wall, to build his own razor wire, uh, and to kind of to to stop this uh, mass migration, right? Um, now, what do you think in the state of Texas? Is he popular? But, yeah, yeah, I think, well, yes. I mean, all the polls and everything, they love him there, right? Because he's kind of standing up, they think, you know, for the state of Texas. And he's standing up to the federal government. And he's standing up to the dang Yankees, right? Do <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, he is the one that's kind of standing up to them. And and uh, so he is, I said in previous episodes that everything he is doing in terms of the border is unconstitutional. All right? I'm going to stand by that because of, you know, everything I said about the about the history. And even subsequent to that, there was more and more rules and laws that were made that said the federal government has the jurisdiction over rules relating to immigration. You can't have all the 50 states having different rules with immigration because then there's not going to be any consistency, right? Um, not that people will say there's consistency now, but anyway, so, um, so everything he's doing is unconstitutional. But then I said um, that he's still doing it because he wants to get his point across that this is a major problem in America. Um, I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just saying that is the point he wants to get across. Uh, and it has made substantial changes. In my opinion, you know, Biden was not looking good here. The Democratic Party were not looking good. I think public opinion started swaying in the favor of we have to tighten the border. Do you know what I'm saying? What do you think? I mean, you know, right? Like yeah, it, they just pass a bill like a pretty... That's the goal, right? Okay, so then they they introduced a bill that they're trying to pass about immigration safety, okay? And I think it's because Biden realized and the Democrats realized, okay, we're the public opinion is is just really against this open border that like 10,000 people every day are crossing and and then they're, they're shipped to all these different cities and it's just creating chaos. 
So the public opinion was definitely in favor of tightening this and somehow. So, uh, yeah, so they so the senators proposed this bill. Uh, remember what I said earlier, everything has uh, a, a history and there was very, very big uh, disputes over how this type of bill with immigration, you need 60 senators to agree, 60, um, not 51. There's some rules, you know, some decisions or laws, you need 51. Some you need 67, you know, like to, um, to convict a president uh, in an impeachment trial, you need 67, uh, you know, you need there's two thirds. Uh, for this one, you need 60 senators to agree to this bill that Mateo is talking about that I'm going to uh, discuss right now. And uh, to do that, you need, you know, like I said, and, and of that 60, you have 48 Democrats right now, and then you have 49 Republicans and three independents. So you need all 48 Democrats and 12 Republicans or independents. Uh, so I'm going to now discuss this bill. And if this bill passes, it is a result of this big tension between Texas and the federal government and, uh, you know, all these protests by Texans and, uh, you know, shipping all these people all over the country. Uh, all right. So you want to talk about the immigration bill and about the border bill and the border wall and everything? Yes, sir. All right. Well, the first, uh, like more than half of the bill discusses the immigration issue by saying we're going to give $60 billion to Ukraine. Uh, in addition to what we give, and another $14 billion to Israel, in addition to what we give Israel, uh, and $4 billion of that is to build uh, more missiles for Israel to use, <laughs> all right? So that's part of the immigration bill. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's a majority part of it, because of this $118 billion, we're looking at, and then another several billion dollars, um, uh, well, I should say, compared to those numbers, a few billion dollars for the Taiwan defense. Uh, you know, the, the concern of China invading Taiwan. Now, what? <laughs> okay, uh, so we're looking, and then some money for the, you know, for like some humanitarian aid to Ukraine and some humanitarian aid to Gaza. Okay, um, so that being said, is the 74, 84, 88 of the... Uh, $118 billion, something like everything but $20 billion would go toward immigration. So the first, you know, $98 billion, I mean, I might be off by a couple billion here and there. You know what I'm saying? All of that. Why is that the case? What is going on here? How is that an immigration bill? It's, it's not, right? This is, uh, but what did I say? How many senators do you need? 67. Um, no, oh yeah, you need 67 if you're going to convict Biden in an impeachment, and you need 60 if you're going to pass this bill, right? So if you need 60 senators, uh, you got to, uh, what is it, pork barreling, you know, you have to add some rider provisions, meaning like provisions that don't relate to this bill because you want to get some other people to, um, to agree. So you have some senators that want to spend money on Israel, you have senators that want to spend money on Ukraine. Maybe they have voters in their home state that uh, want that. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, and even Biden said, you have to go for this border wall because we're going to be defending Ukraine and Israel. Like, <laughs> what does that have to do with it, right? The only way we're going to get, how many Democrats we have is 48 uh, and how many Republicans we have is 49. So the only way we're going to get by part, like we're going to have parties from both sides coming is if we just, dish out money <laughs> or something that's going to make some other senators happy. Uh, I'm not a big fan. I mean, I don't, there should be a rule. There should be a rule. The only way we'll get this rule is if there's some sort of big protest or fight about it or something that says every law should just have one effing subject. Do you know what I'm saying? Like here, it should just be the, if it's about the border wall and they're deeming it or they're, you know, kind of uh, advertising it as border safety. Right. Uh, I guess they should specify which border. <laughs> right. You know, uh, border safety. So, yeah, after all of those billions of dollars to the other countries, then they're dedicating about 20 billion dollars to the border. OK, to our border, the southern border, darn it. Um, and I had the excruciating task of reading this proposed bill. There's there's 370 pages, but uh, some of those pages were a little bit blank. 
So <laughs> it wasn't that bad. And a lot of it was redundant, dang it. Uh, it, it had kind of some, some quirks in there. For example, it's not like we're going to just have a, um, a bigger border wall or something. The way the provisions are written, it's that, okay, if the United States um, government, you know, like the Secretary of State, if, if there's something like at least 4,000 migrants a day crossing, then he can declare a state of emergency and tighten the border. But there has to be at least 4,000 migrants a day crossing. Then he has discretion in terms of, um, you know, kind of increasing the security. If it goes all the way up to 5,000 migrants a day, then he has to declare a state of emergency and he has to uh, secure the border. So I guess you could say they're trying to limit the migrants from, you know, 8,000 a day to 5,000 a day. <laughs> For better or worse, that's what they're trying to do. Okay. Uh, and then the other thing is the state of emergency can only last 45 days. Um, and then otherwise, then it has to stop. And then, you know, you could restart it if certain provisions happen. Uh, but nonetheless, in a whole calendar year, it can't be more than 270 days. Okay. Uh, I go over these particulars because I always think, you know, the you know, I'm a lawyer, right? So it's like the the devil in the details type of thing, <laughs> right? So that's a lot of devil and a lot of details. You know, it's almost like, what is the point of this whole thing other than to give money to Ukraine and Israel? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, you know, uh, I guess it's some, it's a little bit tighter uh, borders, I would say. Also, uh, there's changes to the catch and release policy. You know what the catch and release policy is? Y'all, we're going to give them a nice, safe release. You know, here in North Carolina, we like to respect wildlife. Backflip. So the catch and release in terms of immigration is when you catch all the, um, these people crossing without papers, right? Also known as illegal aliens, right? When you catch them, you kind of cite them, give them a ticket, <laughs> right? And then it says something like, okay, come to court in about 30 years. And until then, you're going to be illegal. <laughs> and when you come back to court in 30 years, we'll sort this out. So they want to stop that program and make, I'm, I'm being a little sarcastic, right? Um, it, and they want to make it more like, okay, when they catch all these illegal aliens, they have to stay in detention. Um, you know, so you have a mom and the kids or whatever, right? And if they're caught, instead of giving them the citation and saying, come back to court in a year, but that year never comes up or it gets delayed or they don't show up and the court gets behind and blah, 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 right? Instead of doing that, they want to make a system where uh, until there's a court hearing, they stay in detention. And they've found that, you know, maybe then the people will be like, okay, let's have our day in court. So we could either get out of detention or do you see what I'm saying? Um, that is a Big, big issue. And you remember the 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 this, the protests over the kids in cages, you know, because what they said was that when um, like Trump was, you know, they, they, they kind of tried to do less of the catch and release and more of this catch and detain. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of people come with kids. Right. So if you're detaining them or you're separating the, the adults and the kid. Oh, my God. I don't see a good solution. <laughs> I don't know. What's a what's the right solution, Mateo? I'm just a lawyer. I'm giving you the legal options. I'm not saying what's the best one. What do you think? You know, um, the two schools of thought, though, about the border wall and and it's kind of it's it's a little, uh, you know, uh, like Governor Abbott of Texas says, if you want the border wall to save migrants, then then you have it so secure and so dangerous that nobody crosses because they know they're going to die and then nobody's going to cross because they know they're going to die. If you want to make it uh, less safe, then you ready? If you want to make it less safe, you have to make the border safer to cross. Because then if it's safer to cross, people will cross, but then a bunch of them will die. Like in the, because the crossing is not very uh, safe. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It's not a perfect crossing. So you make it safer by making it more dangerous. And then you make it more dangerous if you make the border crossing safer because the more people will cross and drown and this and that. <laughs> I would love to hear what you think about everything, all right? As always, it is my pleasure. I'll see you folks next week.